What's up, everybody? Today, we're going over gastroesophageal reflux disease, commonly referred to as GERD, G-E-R-D. So let's get into it. So what are we looking at? Pretty simple here, guys, when it comes to the anatomy, straightforward. We have the stomach, the esophagus. I should have put the esophagus on there, but I like this picture because of how it spells esophagus. So if you're listening to this on the pod, on, on, on the podcast, check it out on YouTube. But you see, it's how it's spelled. It's in Spanish. It's funny. Um, so I appreciate that that picture. But with that being said, essentially what we're looking at is the stomach and the lower esophageal sphincter. So that's what attaches the esophagus to the stomach itself. And so what happens when we have GERD is that we'll have reflux that goes up from like the stomach acid contents start going up from the stomach and into the lower parts of the esophagus, causing irritation reflux, sour taste in the mouth, all the things we would get heartburn and stuff when it comes to GERD. So that's the anatomy. Um, I got the same picture on the next slide because I want you guys to understand it is where like the etiology of GERD is essentially that the lower esophageal sphincter just stops working. Um, stops working how it should. So it becomes incompetent. What do I mean by incompetent? That means it's allowing backflow of the stomach acids from the stomach into the esophagus, which... Stomach acid's like pretty low pH. What we're thinking like, like two or so, I think is the average acidity of the stomach for pH level, which that's pretty acidic. So um, we don't want that getting into the esophagus because this can cause, first of all, irritation. And also it can cause the cells at the bottom of the esophagus to start becoming like mutating and cause some esophageal cancer. So we don't want that as well. So what's happening is like the stomach lining is starting to get inflamed. Everything's kind of pushing up through and the sphincter just stops working. It's letting things go out the in essentially. So that's what's going on with GERD. And a lot of times it's an insidious onset could be the food that you're eating. They're not too sure. Just kind of happens. In regards to the boards, what you need to know is how we're going to treat somebody who has GERD because we're not treating the GERD, we're treating them and they just happen to have GERD. So what does it look like? This is what we're going to see with this patient. The classification of GERD is that it will occur more than two times per week and it will affect your daily life. So for example, I believe one of my classmates in school, they had a uh, GERD going on or some sort of reflux going on. It would cause them to like not be able to sleep well and stuff like that. And it was really affecting like their activities of daily living. So um, that's kind of what was going on. And they claimed it was just reflux. I really think it was GERD, but we'll, we'll let that ship sail when it comes to that. But things like that, like it's affecting your sleeping, it's affecting your ability to do work. It's affecting your ability to do your activities of daily living. And like, that's when it becomes a problem. So a lot of times like we'll see, okay, a, a, like a condition is like a symptom of something. It's like kind of problematic, but it's okay. It's not really affecting things. It's just an annoying thing. This becomes more than just an annoying thing. This is like, it's actually affecting them to a point where they have to modify everything in their life to be able to complete their activities of daily living. So what are the symptoms we would see with GERD? Main thing that we see is heartburn. So like just that sensation, just like, ugh, kind of in your chest sort of thing. The big thing that the boards cares about, and that's why I have this bolded and underlined. Well, it's just bolded. Sorry, I lied. It's just bolded. It says symptoms will worsen in these categories. It will worsen in supine. So do not put this patient in supine just because the stomach acid and the stuff is just going to keep coming back up and it's going to keep coming up the esophagus just based, you know, gravity is just going to flow backwards. A stooping over or bending over that motion of coming forward kind of thing is going to cause problems and cause increase in the reflux. And then it's going to be worse at night. So that's kind of what my classmate was going through. They had it like way worse at night. It was affecting their sleeping. And this is because a lot of people are going to either be sleeping on the right side, which is going to exacerbate their symptoms or their back or something like that. So um, we're going to have nausea. Let's just say after meals, not means meals. So you're gonna have nausea that worsens after you eat something. So a lot of people they'll avoid eating breakfast because they'll be so nauseous first thing in the morning sort of thing. Um, you'll have this feeling like that food's still stuck in your throat, you have like a lump in your throat, almost kind of thing going on. And then it's going to cause dysphagia. So that's going to be difficulty swallowing. And so that's just like, do you like, you feel like I haven't fully swallowed. I feel like there's something in there. That's kind of what's going on. Um, you'll have a sour taste in your mouth and that's because of the reflux. So your stomach acid's actually coming back up and it's causing it to taste really soury and bittery. And it's just ugh, not kind of good. People kind of describe it. I know in the olden days, they're like, I tasted bile in my mouth. That's kind of 
that's what they mean. It's just like gross and not good. Um, chest pain, that's kind of due to the heartburn and other things in that nature. And then they'll have hoarseness. So just difficulty talking and a dry mouth with a cough. So it's going to be like one of those like gross coughs that you're like, dude, you okay? Kind of thing. Um, cause it doesn't feel productive or anything like that. It's just dry. So unproductive cough is the kind of what's going on with this person. So how are we treating it? So we're not really like treating GERD as I kind of previously mentioned. We're more like treating somebody who like has a rotator cuff who happens to have GERD kind of thing. Cause they're going to be on medications, maybe antacids, lots of things to control. Sometimes they'll need surgical intervention to actually repair the sphincter itself because it sucks so much at working that they have to like go in and actually fix it. Um, and so this person will be on pharmacological management and also physician management. But here's what comes into like where we're, we come into play because we'll be treating somebody who has rotator cuff tear as I said before, or like an ear replacement or like, I don't know. The board's going to say like, oh, they have some other condition and oh, they have a history or a past medical history of GERD. That's where they will kind of throw it in. So the things that we have to take into account when we're treating somebody who has GERD is that we want to avoid exercises that put them in supine or right side lying. And because if we think of the anatomy of the stomach, so here's our stomach here. So see how, I mean, this is kind of like a poorly drawn picture, but see how, when it comes to the stomach in your, um, in your body, actually, I'm going to find a good picture to show you guys of the stomach. So I can kind of explain this a little better. So you can see, I have pulled up this random picture from Cleveland clinic. So we can see that the stomach here, ha see how it kind of sits onto the left side and see how it kind of scoops the, the, like the contents. So if you were going to lay on your left side, there would be space for the stomach contents to go. Like if you're laying on your left side, the stomach contents can just kind of slide up and scoop to the side where there's still space in the stomach and not be splashing out into the esophagus. So if you're laying on your right side, especially if you're in a semi Fowler's position, the way that the stomach is set up is that the anatomy allows the stomach acid to have room to move where it's not going up into the sphincter. Now, if you lay on your right side, however, you can see that the, the stomach acids will just kind of like scoop over and go back into the stomach just based on how you're sitting there. So if you want to take your hand and see how it scoops up on the left side, make it like a C, like a weird hook C, like make your stomach shape, like how I'm making it right now. Put it right there on your stomach. And I want you to kind of lean to the left side. And you see that it's essentially makes like a little scoop, a little scoop where the stomach acid can go. And then you're fine. So you think that like your little, your little soup, like bowl of the stomach acid is not going to spill over. Now, if you were going to lay on your right side, now go to your right side, you can see all of that's going to spill out. It's all going to spill out. That's why laying in right side line is going to cause a lot more irritation to the esophagus than laying in left side line. So that's why we're able to have people lay in left side line. So that's why I don't want people to be laying in right side lying because that's just going to cause, you know, our little, our little soup ladle spillover and do this on the exam, do this on the exam, because remember your body's a cheat sheet, always do things on the exam. Your body is a cheat sheet. Don't forget that. So do not place the patient in supine or right side lying. Instead, if they need to be in left side lying, See how this pillow has, this guy has his arm through and he's able to lay on it. And he's like, you know, got space and he can lay on his left side while also being in a semi Fowler's ish position. That is how I want you guys to lay. So if you're listening to this on the podcast later, go watch the YouTube video of GERD that I'm going to be posting, or you can look up what's called like, it's like a gas. It's like a reflux pillow, I think is what it's called. So this is going to be how you would want to lay down. Um, so these are just being, have precautions with like bending over exercise or stooping exercises. So like a bent over row, if they're like a rotator cuff tear, just be careful with that. The rolling the ball forward kind of thing, just be careful with those kind of things that might irritate it. Have the patient just move with intolerance sort of thing. So um, as I said before, if they need to perform left sideline, have them lay in um, either this position that this individual is here on this pillow or if they can manage left side lying while like, you know, propping up their, like, you know, like that, like if you're thinking of doing like a side lying hip abduction, like they say, like the Jane Fonda kind of, uh, you know, exercise aerobics kind of stuff laying on your side with the head propped up, 
that's how you could do it just to kind of get you a little bit more elevated. Again, if the patient needs to perform exercises that would traditionally be done in supine, something like, you know, pure form of stretch, like single knee to chest or something like that, have them be in a semi fowler's position. So use a wedge to prop them up. So they're not laying completely flat. So then the stomach acid contents aren't flowing backwards anymore. So that's how we would be treating these patients. Just modify everything to avoid the stomach acid coming up. So what are our keywords that we're going to think about when it comes to GERD? Any sort of chronic reflux kind of thing, or, you know, they're tasting the sour taste in their mouth, any of that stuff that's going to be, we're thinking more GERD kind of things because if it's a chronic condition. Remember how I talked about, like, sometimes things just happen. And it's just like, oh, it's like a random event. Like, I mean, we all get like random, like, ugh, kind of thing I threw up in my mouth. It tastes really gross. Um, I'm talking like, you know, the one to two times, like the two or more times a week that's causing problems with you being able to do anything. Um, symptoms will worsen at night. Symptoms will worsen in right side lying and symptoms will worsen in supine. So we want to avoid those positions altogether. Left side lying is okay. Semi fowlers is okay. The patient's going to have heartburn. That's one of the major symptoms of this. And it's going to be the pathology is an incompetence of the lower esophageal sphincter. So not upper, lower. And I said poor pain sports at night. And remember two times per week or more affecting your daily life. So this is something that's, you know, it's, Less than just like annoying, it's like causing serious problems. So sample question, guys. Oh, no wonder I kept mentioning rotator cuff. That's in the question. A physical therapist assistant is treating a patient diagnosed with a right rotator cuff tear. Upon chart review, the therapist notes that the patient has a past medical history of gastroesophageal reflux disease. Which of the following interventions would be inappropriate for this patient? One, supine dowel flexion. Two, sideline external rotation with one pound weight. Should be left sideline external rotation with one pound weight. Three, standing scaption with one pound weight. Or four, seated bicep curls. So give you guys a second to think about that. Again, our sideline external rotation would be left sideline because this patient has a right rotator cuff tear. So I want to make sure that was clear before I talk to you guys about the question. So I'll go through that again. Number one is supine dowel flexion. Number two is sideline external rotation with one pound of weight. Number three is standing scaption with one pound of weight and four is seated bicep curls. All right, guys, so the answer is supine dowel flexion. So we don't want this patient in supine. Those are one of the positions that's counter, that's like not allowed, that's not good, that's going to exacerbate their symptoms. And so that is why this one is wrong. Let's go through the other answers and just make sure you guys can understand why that, like none of these other ones, like all these other ones are okay. So number two, sideline external rotation with one pound of weight. Again, I kind of clarify to give you guys a little bit of a bone to throw there that this person would be in left sideline because remember if we're doing sideline external rotation with a weight we're going to lay on the opposite side of the of the affected side to work that side so therefore our patient who has a right rotator cuff tear would be sitting laying on their left side to perform the activity and remember left side is okay right side is not okay so that would be a, this would be appropriate still for this patient because we modified it to you know work the appropriate side Therefore, we're good. Standing exercises are always okay. Seated exercises are always okay. It's that supine positioning and right side lying that are going to cause problems. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful in explaining a little bit about GERD. Remember, just avoid right side lying and avoid supine, modify by left side lying or semi Fowler's position, or just have them sit up and do it that way. All right, guys, I hope that this was helpful and I will see y'all in the next one. Take care.